Okay, and welcome back everyone taking Math for Business and Finance and Math Applications. And we are covering the Chapter 17 Theory Aspect, uh, which is oh, um, the chapter is about depreciation. And um, I, before I go into the units of production, which is what this video is about, I happened to glance down at the textbook um, and I saw they were heading uh, depreciation for partial years. Um, just remember that these theory videos do not cover absolutely everything that's in the book. I mean, I, my, you know, the purpose behind these videos is that are to be supplements to what's in the book. Your book is your primary source of knowledge, so I don't cover every little nuance that is in the book. Yes, I do bring uh, other real-world experience, other additional knowledge into these videos, but no, I don't. You know, I'm not regurgitating, repeating everything in the book. This is not high school work, okay? Um, so, you know, just be sure that, and I may realize you're looking at Chapter 17, and if you've been following along since the beginning, you know, you, you probably are, you've heard me say this, you know, quite a few times, but um, if you happen to be just skipping around, whatever have you, and this is one of your lucky spots, well, you know, when you're doing chapters, you know, you're doing a test problem and you come across something like, uh, you know, partial years. If you weren't reading the book and you, all you were doing is just watching these videos, well, obviously you're going to get that problem wrong. And then, you know, and that's your own fault for not studying the book instead of just uh, watching these videos. Okay. So anyway, let's move on to units production. Okay. Um, again, you know, uh, units of production is just another method. Okay. And um, it's basically the same exact thing as um, straight line with just a, a quick twist. Okay. And uh, again, it, you know, understand concepts. Okay. Try not to memorize. If you you know, I went over straight line and explained all of that concept. Um, do you have to, you know, remember the formula? To be honest with you, when I had to write the formula on the the uh, the slide, you know, what I did, what, what I I didn't look in the book and try to copy the the formula, and I didn't, you know, repeat the formula out of my memory. What I did was was I thought about the concept, which is, and and I'm giving you an, exp an example of that when I'm doing this one for units of production. I know that, you know, the concept is that I start out with my cost and I subtract out my residual value or my salvage value. Okay. Now for straight line depreciation, you know, I knew that for straight line, that's over years. Well, the only difference between straight line and units of production is that instead of using years, I'm going to be using units, number of units produced. Okay. That's the difference in concept. I mean, straight line, I'm looking at years. Units of production, I'm talking about units that this asset created or used or whatever have you. Now, what's going to happen is because it's units, um, it's going to give me a per unit, per unit amount. Okay. That's not going to be my depreciation. Okay. I have to take that per unit amount and multiply that um, by the units produced. PR produced. Okay. So, um, you know, there's actually, I, I'm doing basically the same thing I did with straight line, but I have to actually take one extra step because I have to, you know, I'm, I'm breaking this down to, you know, cost per unit, a depreciation amount per unit, and depending upon how many units um, were produced will determine that uh, whole depreciation amount. So let me erase that and kind of rewrite it. So I have a cost less my residual value over the number of units, and that's going to give me a per unit. Okay. So then I take the per unit and I multiply that time, time multiply that by the number of units produced, and that's what's going through my head. 
I'm not memorizing this formula. You, you saw how I, I, right here, the number of units was based upon the difference between, um, you know, this method and straight line depreciation. And I also know that if I have a per unit, well, that can't be my depreciation because it might only be 50 cents. And if I produced 2,000 units, well, you know, that's $1,000 in depreciation, right? And you'll see that as we go along here, okay? So, um, per unit. Okay, so again, there's always a, you know, a schedule and they're using this equipment as an example again. And remember, when you're using the equipment, you know, depending upon how you want to see your financial information, you can you could use either the straight line or this units of production. You have the choice. But just like in straight line depreciation, we had um, for this uh, example in the book, they said the cost, the purchase price was $2,500 and they were depreciating it for five years. Okay, and it, um, at the end of that five years, they wanted to have a $500 residual value. Okay, so this is not, a, you know, we take the cost of the $2,500 um, less the residual value of $500, and that gives me $2,000. All right, uh, 2000 is what I'm going to end up depreciating over the course of the five years. Right? Now, we you know, for each and every year, we cannot determine what that depreciation amount is until we know how many units were produced. So for year one, 300 units were produced. So, um, so we also um, must, um, we, we have to kind of like know um, how many units that we're going to produce over the life of it. Okay, well, in this case here, we kind of said, oh, we're going to produce, and it tells you here that um, uh, the number of units produced that the, that the equipment is going to produce is going to be 4,000. So when we take our $2,000 and we divide it by 4,000, okay, we get 50 cents a unit. Okay, so that's 50 cents per unit. Okay? Now, we take that amount times the units produced. So in that first year, we had 300, 300 units produced, and we take the 50, 50 cents, down here, 50 cents, times the um, 300 units produced, okay? And that gives me a depreciation amount of $150, okay? And they, they're showing the math here. And again, once we, you know, do the, um, the first line, you know, the math gets this is the same, you know, for each year. So we have $150 um, of depreciation expense for this year. And of course, our accumulated depreciation is $150 because it's the same as, you know, we're doing the same exact thing we did with the straight line. At the beginning of the year, we had zero for accumulated depreciation. Well, at the end of the year, we have 150. So when we add that to it, you know, our accumulated depreciation is 150. And just like in the straight line, our book value, okay, is going to be our cost less our accumulated depreciation to give us our book value. All right. Now, notice, um, you know, when you're looking at all of this, notice that you have different numbers. Okay. Uh, in the straight line example, at the end of year one, our book value was, um, let me go back up here. Our book value here was 2100. Okay. Now when we're you know, using units of production, our book value is 2350. Right. You know, and the difference between those two, you know, you say, well, what does that matter? Well, that has to do with your taxes because remember on your income statement, we have revenues less expenses, okay, to give us a profit or loss. And the uh, depreciation is an expense. So that will either increase or decrease your profit or loss. If we had done the straight line, okay, 
well, our expense was our depreciation expense was twenty one hundred. Okay, um, but if we do the units of production for this year, it's twenty three fifty. Well, that means we have three two hundred and fifty dollars more in expense this year, which means our profit is lower this year. And you know, I mean, and that you know, when you're analyzing a business, and we've um, covered this in the the previous chapters when we're doing ratio analysis. Okay, well, you know, part of that profit or loss, you saw everywhere the net income, it has an effect with your ratio analysis. Um, and it also has tax ramifications because you have less of a profit, meaning you're going to pay less in taxes for this year. So again, it's all a matter of how you want to see the information, the financial information, in order to decide what method you're going to use. All right. So let me erase this here. Okay, so... Um, this gets to be, you know, pretty much just the same exact thing. You know, in our second year here, you know, we're still at $2,500. Our cost stays our cost, okay? Um, we had determined that our cost per unit here is a 50 cents, all right? It's always going to be 50 cents. Once we, once we do this portion of the formula, okay? Once we do um, this portion of the method to arrive at this cost per unit, all right, um, that's always going to stay the same. The only thing that then changes is we're taking our cost and multiplying it by the number of units produced in this column. Now remember I had erased it, but now once we have our per unit cost times our units produced. And that's for each and every year. So in the second year, you know, we know our cost per unit is uh, 50 cents. And in the second year, we're, we produce 400 units. Well, 400 times 50 cents gives you uh, $200 that you're going to show for your depreciation this year. Then your accumulated depreciation column and your book value column is, like I said, the same as on the other uh, for the same as doing the schedule for uh, straight line depreciation, where you take 2,500 less your accumulate depreciation in order to get your book value. And remember, your accumulate depreciation is the value from the last year plus what you have this year to get this year's accumulated. Right. So as you can see. Once you understand and know the uh, the process, it all just becomes a matter of just doing the math. Okay, um, we do the same thing for year three, year four. Let's jump down to year five. Okay, our co our purchase price was still twenty five hundred. We had seven thousand, I mean seven hundred units produced. Okay, um, and notice that. I'm sorry, let me get my, okay, so we have 700 units produced, and we're multiplying it by 50 cents, right, which means our depreciation is 350 for this year, for year number five, and our total accumulated depreciation is the 1650 from the previous year, plus this year's 350, means we have $2,000 of accumulated depreciation, okay, and then we take the 2,500 less the 2,000, and that gives me 500, which is what we wanted for residual value. Right. So, you know, the only, you know, as you can see, the difference here between the units of production and straight line depreciation is the fact that we're instead of the number of, you know, using the number of years as we did in straight line. We sit and we set. We sit and say, "Okay, how many units do we want to produce?" All right? That's what we're plugging into this formula. And because we're talking about units, we arrive at a cost per unit, and we multiply it times the number of units produced in each individual year in order to arrive at our depreciation amounts for those years. But everything else is the same. Okay? So you know. You know, if you understood straight line depreciation, just realize what the differences are 
for the units of production, and this way you don't have to be rememorizing everything. And of course, if you do the homework problems, you get plenty of practice at it um, because it is math. Using an Excel spreadsheet for this stuff um, is actually beneficial because you, you know you plug in the, the right formulas, and then all it is is just copy and paste and from cell to cell to cell. Okay. Um, whereas if you had to do this by hand, you know it's just like so tedious and it takes forever. Okay. But um, yeah, that's um, that's all there is to it for the units of production, and um, I'm going to stop here and pick up. Uh, with the declining balance method in the next video and if you again if you didn't understand something watch the video again or contact an instructor okay